Okay. I'm going to play this game that I got um, from Panzer. I did a Panzer Blitz one. I'll do a Panzer Leader this time. And this is the old game that I, I got back when I, I, I was probably right out of high school, maybe 74, 75. And I was able to order some of my own games and deliver to the house by UPS, of all things. I was wondering, who is that? It's not the post office. So look, it's still beat up. It has all, uh, but I'll, show, I'll unbox it and show you what's in it. And um, then we'll play a scenario. And I, I think I'll just use the rules as in the game, as if it's I just bought it. Again, there I know there's been some people trying to modify the rules and things like that. I'll use some of the things uh, um, that I remember to be cumbersome. Might be opportunity fire and things like that. I'll just use those in the rules and play play a game. If you haven't seen it before, you'll might be interested. And if you have seen it before, uh, you'll be it'll bring a little bit of nostalgia back. I will start with the Panzer Leader unboxing of this old game that I have. Um, so I'll take a look at it. Just take it out like, and take a look at what's in there. So we have our little units. These are uh, different, these are artillery. I have them sorted out in different Ziploc bags. If you bought the game, you might actually have it in punch, punch cards. Uh, allied infantry, extra bags. Here's some more allied. This is allied uh, artillery. Right, see that, and then there's oh, we have some uh, uh, axis units that's our transportation and some utility units like burns and things. Here's some uh, more allied armored German armor and German artillery, and some more bags, and then here's some German infantry. Okay, and so let's go to more of the box here. Let's see here. Here's some charts that they have, terrain effects charts, and the scenarios. Looks like there's uh, quite a few scenarios here. Maybe up to 19 of them. 12, uh, 20, 20 scenarios. So I'll decide which one of those I want to play. Situation map shows you where the scenarios were actually played, uh, where, where they're, they're representing the battle in Europe at the time. Combat results table. Uh, good old Panzer Leader manual. I'll read over again before I start. This one's different than Panzer Blitz. If you remember if you saw that video, it's only like a couple pages. This one, they decided to make a book out of it and make, put some more rules. So it makes it seem a little more complicated perhaps, uh, but easier to use and it didn't get torn up over the years. I right, then see then we have uh, the geomorphic boards. There's four of them this time. One of them has beach on it. So it'll be tempting to play the invasion from the, from the beach. And there's, uh, that was a B, and here's C. So you can make quite a board here. D and A. So all these boards can be moved around to make different different games, so that's how they design it. So you can quite quite a big battlefield in this game. So we'll see, I'll decide which scenario to play and see which one to play. And I'm tempted to use some of the bigger ones, but I'm also tempted to use these beach ones because it just looks like so much fun to invade with this game. Okay, I've decided uh, when I'm playing the game, I'm going to use scenario number 18 for um, one of the reasons is I see that they have um, airplanes on this one, so I wanted to use the airplanes. I guess I saw it before. I have markings down here where I marked the record track instead of using the marker. I was lazy about that, but anyway, so I'm going to try this Bastogne Siege, and I think I will use the optional rules, um, um, most of them, uh, Opportunity Fire and a few others. And it's maybe good or bad. I'm tempted not to use it because I remember Opportunity Fire um, <coughs> kind of changes the character of the game, but I'm going to do it anyway because I th it's the difference with Panzer Leader and Panzer Blitz, the big difference in it. So there you go. I'll set this up and turn it and record the next set the setup. Okay, here I have here I have the unit set up for the uh, set up for the initial uh, deployment of the American units. Here's the infantry and the armor, and then you have uh, the air. They we use most of the uh, units in the setup. There are quite a few of them that were provided. In fact, we use air, the air bombers twice because they only had five. Provided in the game, you have to have two flights of five. So when one flight goes in, the other has a flight has to go off. So these will be set up on board A and B, A and C, A and C.
Okay, here's the initial setup between uh, for the U.S. troops on boards A and C. Um, as I'm getting ready for the uh, Germans to come in on board D, and the victory conditions are to prevent as many as possible from getting on to board A. The German victory conditions are to get as many as possible on board A. So we're trying to prevent their moving through the front. I'm trying to set up the, here's the German units for to be to set up on the board and you see the, the, here's the Allied deployment trying to determine where to put them. This is initial placement. It's probably the main thing that will happen for the German player this term where I put the German units will determine how the war goes, how the battle goes for them. So I'm trying to pick out a place to to attack this front. All right, here we go. This is the initial deployment again of the Germans. We're going to assume this is the south front of the board. We're going to focus on pushing through here and pushing through the middle uh, right here and trying to cut out these units that are up the top so they won't be able to come through. So there you go. Okay, it, now after the German first turn, so we were able to move into, although we're using opportunity fire in this game, so these units opportunity fired, and they're also spotted now by firing into the, in, in the line of sight of enemy units, they're spotted. So this guy used opportunity fire, so they can't fire, so they're subject to fire this one too. I did knock out a, a German unit, got destroyed here, but and moving like this did enable them to overwhelm. And so these guys were subject to opportunity fire, but they also were so many infantry, they were able to defeat these two units on the hilltop. So maybe opportunity fire does not completely stymie the enemy because there's disadvantages to using it, if I remember right. But it does, it does make a change in the game. But <clears throat> the Germans are advancing as per plan. Let's see how allies can respond. Okay, the allies have played their turn now. <clears throat> They've been trying to move units from the north up here. Sorry. Trying to move them, trying to move them down to accommodate, to try to meet the German onslaught. I realized that maybe my defense isn't as good as I thought. And what's going to have really make the difference is this indirect fire from these heavy units here. So spotting may be the, the way that they win this battle because, so for instance, this is only a 2 close assault at a 12. It's only 1 to 6 odds. It's not allowed. So our infantry units are not strong enough to really beat this guy's back, beat them back. So... It looks like our defense is a lot weaker than I thought for the Allies. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, this is after the Allies' second turn. The end of the second turn, the Allies play, and the Germans are the first players. So, here's the board. I so I have the, the units tumbled over so you can see which units are under in a stack. Because you can stack four per unit. We have the, 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 with this game you can be spotted after you fire and from concealment, but you're on the line of sight of somebody of an enemy unit. You're going to be spotted. So the Germans are moving all their units quite well into this board. They win if they get them over here. Now then, the thing that's going to happen in the third turn is the Allies are going to get their air power to come in. Here's their air power waiting to come in. That may make a significant difference. Plus, um, it looks like what might turn the tide or it might be the best way for the Allies to win is just to spot, have people spot these units and be able to bring in these heavy-duty indirect fire units that are out here in the back of the uh, back of the, the battlefield. It's already resulted in some losses. Here's the losses so far. That one infant German infantry unit was beat by indirect fire. But... And those, um, those other units were lost. So it hasn't been too many units lost yet. But So 
uh, we'll see how this goes but I'm, I'm learning things with the game I forgot about it's um, the, the indirect fire is indirect fire is quite interesting you have to have to put it in a turn ahead of time and things change in between the time that you put it in and the time that you're able to execute it so that's an interesting thing that happens so right here we had a um, these guys were able to shoot I thought but actually these heavy green hexides are a line of sight of obstruction from them uh, from from them shooting up the hill and them shooting down the hill so that's something I forgot about that we have to take into account so anyway some interesting things happening on this turn so let me take, zoom it up a little bit okay here's the situation after the Germans they're the ones to play first so they move off the board onto the board there was an overrun down here on this unit right there overrun they are marching slowly across the board up here but the new threat will be um, by the Americans coming in on turn three. Okay, so I'm doing the fire bomb, uh, uh, fighter bombers. Here's one here, and there's one here attacking. <clears throat> this Whirlpool Wind is an anti aircraft, it'll be able to fire, and I've done that one, he's just gonna be damaged. So he's not gonna be able to shoot. This one's maybe out of the range. I'm not doing any bomber attacks. Here's the bombers. <clears throat> And the, and the spotting aircraft doesn't have to be close. It can see the whole board from where it's flying, so it, just, it can just fly where it's at. Okay. Here's a situation that slides third turn. Take a look down here below. The close assault, this point right here, was, these guys were dispersed. They're not dispersed anymore, so the Germans are still thinking about moving there. These units are moving across. The Allies, the Ger Americans are strengthening this defense in the forest to prevent these units from getting across. These units are trying to move down. We're trying. <coughs> these guys anticipating indirect fire hitting and they moved here and fired. They're not dispersed, they just fired. So they're right there. And still in the woods here. Uh, we had some indirect fire orders. We did the the fire the air factors. With the uh, air factors, were able to a, a a rocket attack on these German this German tank unit resulted in it being dispersed. Close assault by this small armored car unit had no effect. I mean, an overrun attack had no effect. And so there you go. That is the end of turn. Three. Okay, here's the situation after the Germans' uh, fourth turn. So again, the fifth turn. Indirect fire was done. Let's see. The Germans are still trying to advance. They're going to run into a problem of not having enough time for these units to march across here. They may not be able to make it. Even these here. So this delay with these units here might prevent these from getting to that point and prevent their victory conditions. So we'll see. Right now it looks like oh, they had to move these guys out. I had to, they can't stay there any longer so they're out in the open trying to cross the ground. So they're, in, so they're um, vulnerable. So we'll see what happens. And these guys are spotted in the back. The indirect fire guys are spotted because of this observational aircraft here. Okay, this is after the Germans' fourth, I mean the Allies' fourth turn, so the fourth turn's over. It'll be the fifth turn, because the Germans move first in this game. So here, we're looking at the situation after that turn. The um, indirect fire has taken a toll. There was a unit lost, and these are dispersed as they try to cross the field. They were spotted by an infantry unit that are, they were spotted, and then the, uh, they're made to get shot at. So, there might be an error here because the unit was destroyed that spotted them. So, it should have scattered. 
I, I, I missed that that opportunity. This little uh, armored car unit has been keeping this this German unit pinned down. It's dispersed again, so it hasn't been able to move up. And this little bulwark right here in the wood prove an obstacle to these uh, infantry units trying to make it to this board. I don't know how to get them there otherwise. And with the air factors still and this spotting unit, these guys are spotted. So in the allied turn, they might find themselves an anti-aircraft unit here that can try to prevent some of that. But there you go. That's the end of the fourth turn. Okay. We're recording. This is the after the allies. No, after the total fifth turn, the allies just moved. So this unit was dispersed by opportunity fire. <clears throat> so it stays dispersed. So here's the situation. Looks like. The Germans are. There's um. They've taken over Saint Alphans, and they're able. They still have several turns to push into here, and this thinly defended. They can depend on the fighter bombers are able to do some things. They knocked out some German artillery right here, that was spotted. These guys are spotted too, but the Germans are going to move them next turn. So, they're hoping that maybe they can save them from those. Um, airplane attacks and there you go so that's the end of the fifth turn we'll see what happens on the sixth turn okay after the sixth turn the losses are building up here a little bit there's the allied losses and the German losses and the Germans are continuing to try to advance They've kind of been stalled here. These guys are dispersed by by fire from these artillery units. The loss of the artillery units from the Germans might be a significant factor. Airplanes are going to be expended. It might be time for the second flight to come in. But the, but they're trying to solidify their defense to keep the Germans from moving in to the next board as they keep slugging away to try to get through. Let's see if there's anything else significant to mention. Some omissions where I failed to bring in these anti-aircraft factors. And I have a picture of this battle right there I'll show. Where the airplanes came in to fight. The X's are just in indicating that these units did anti-aircraft fire. And they're not available for uh, firing direct fire this turn or movement. That's the end of the sixth turn. Okay, this is the end of the seventh turn so I'll take a look here or the yeah seventh turn so there was an air attack here and this this units disperse okay oh air attack here trying to get these guys and they didn't these these units it was driven away by anti-aircraft fire from these squatters Germans continue to push but there's only three turns they got to get into that into that hex they've been delayed by the American units, which may it may mean that that's that's how they win the game. These units moved and have now unloaded, and they can be used in direct fire. But that took a lot a lot it took a lot of time just to move them and load them and unload them. So that's not a good plan either. Sometimes okay, all right, here we go. A new flight of airplanes have come in. The other ones were all used up. So here we go. Alright, so this is the uh, end of the 8th turn. We're still trying to move through here. These units are trying. There's some, some German units have made it through. It's tight. We're trying to, they're trying to tighten up here a little bit. Get some firepower. And the firing the artillery has been effective in this area. There are more German units that were lost in the woods as they're trying to move through. I'll keep it from them from scoring so high there. Uh, air attack here. Oh no, was it? I think it was right there. Uh, um, and that's that's the end of the eighth turn. Okay, this is the end of the ninth turn. End of the ninth turn, and we're looking at 
those many losses it's creeping up the Germans are trying to get people in here but these guys are trying to develop some spotting won't we'll probably get shot at but trying desperately to keep these units from getting onto this board here so that's what we're doing right now the tenth turn is coming up the artillery here are going to be coming into play there's still some air power that's going to be a problem too right here I think okay okay this is after the 11th turn and so we're still trying to uh, the allies are trying to throw together kind of a frantic defense here throwing some pieces even moving them across open terrain trying to get over here throwing in units to try to get spotting into these woods and doing things like that and your defense is getting thin they're losing more units but you don't lose win the scenario by how many save you win by how many prevent the Germans preventing from getting on the board so that's what they're continuing to do even if they have to sacrifice units to do so so that's what's happening now and they on the, the tenth turn okay this is after the eleventh turn the allies are still trying to prevent Germans from moving in and knocked out a couple more units so that might make the difference in the battle they're still knocking guys out before they get there but the Germans are kind of pouring in and allied defense is getting thin and their indirect fire can't keep up with the movement so we'll see what happens on the last turn okay game's over looks like 18 units are here that makes for a German marginal victory if you look at the scenario German marginal victory so it was a it was a difficult haul it's a really interesting chess type game really situation 18 and it was um it's not only uh, possible; it's likely that the Germans would win this win this with a higher victory condition if somebody planned better. Because uh, it was, it, it, I thought opportunity fire would slow down opportunity fire, and the spotting it's rules different from Panzer Blitz would favor the de defense in this game, but. I've come to the opinion that no, I don't think so. I think uh, it looks like they, they played well, it played fast, and it was still uh, it's a difficult situation for the for the American Allied forces to keep the Germans off of that board. They're supposed to go from from board D to board A, and uh, I managed to get a um, marginal tactical victory with 18 German units on the on the on the board, but. Uh, a little more, a little better planning, and a little better uh, working with the situation. If you're familiar with it, and you've played it a couple times, could make it difficult for the Allies to prevent a uh, higher level German victory. So it's a, it's a very playable scenario. Surprisingly, I thought the air factors would play a big factor, but if you position your air defense units well with the Germans, those air factors can be. Um, if not neutralized, at least uh, limited in their ability to to uh, inflict damages because there's enough air, air anti-air artillery with the Germans, and you can push it, one of them is mobile, um, um, and so you can push those around and keep the uh, German uh, the uh, Allied air from having a significant significant factor. One of the things that was very important in this game is the indirect fire and the off board I mean the artillery on the on the back side of the the game. That is, plays a significant role in beating down the enemy. So you, indirect fire is interesting and uh, but it didn't change the game completely but it did make a big difference in how you and how you use it. So anyway I liked it. I recommend it again. It's an old game if you can find a copy of Panzer Leader. I, I, I still like the game, might still like it. I have these old boxes in my closet. I might bring out some more, play another one sometime because they're fun, fun to play and fun to share with you. Thank you.